Welcome back to Marion County Espresso TV. I'm your host, Steve Woodhouse, and joining me today is Monty Godike, the man who's usually behind the camera. Monty has been hard at work for months now on a special documentary about the history of Pella, and that will be airing in the future on Pella TV. Probably about a year from now is the first episode. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be at least a three-part series, so the first part of the series will be approximately a year from now is when it'll air. And what you were telling me yesterday was that there's just so much history that you keep stumbling upon more things you didn't know. Yeah, we, we, it's amazing. We spent yesterday at the Marion County Recorder's Office, and uh, we found out, um, well, we, we were, we're looking up who uh, Dominique Scolti purchased the land from. He purchased about 18,000 acres when he arrived here. And so we're looking for the records that show who he purchased the land from. Rumor has it he purchased some from the Native Americans, some of it from the Tuttles, some of it from Nosmans, mm -hmm. and uh, so and and so far um, we can't find those records. So we're mm -hmm. we're looking for that, and and it, we just keep digging holes, and and it goes deeper and deeper, and, and we find out more information, and it's 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 pretty interesting. And of course, you know you. You recently did a lot of research on the journey here, you know, from mm -hmm. from Holland to Albany to St. Louis. Yes, yeah, Boston and Albany. So, although some of them came through uh, New Orleans and then came mm -hmm. up the river from New Orleans to St. Louis to Keokuk to Pella. Uh, so it depends on which specific group. Um, but yeah, we're we're actually looking for the steamships that they that would have brought the the group from, or groups of 200 people, you know, there were between eight and 900 people total, but each boat took about 200. So we're looking for the names of the steamships that brought them up from St. Louis to Keokuk. Mm -hmm. Now from Keokuk, they would have taken a wagon train back over here to Pella. But ironically, we found out that uh, soon after they settled here, there were steamships, and this is, the Des Moines River was totally different back in the 1840s, uh, there were steamships going up and down the Des Moines River. And uh, we found out that uh, the, the Dutch were selling bologna and cheese at the market in St. Louis via that steamship that was going up and down the Des Moines River. Now, it's since shifted, and you, they can't get steamships or, or big ships on the river anymore. But um, So we're looking for any pictures, any records of that as well. Uh, so, yeah, we just keep digging and finding more interesting things, and then that turns into something else, and, and uh, yeah, we're uncovering all kinds of stuff. And, yeah, we were talking about how you're interested in any kind of history from yeah. Pella, your, your, uh, your ancestral history and things of that nature, you mm -hmm. know, any kind of records you have, because that might tie in. That might have some real historical Absolutely. significance to our community. Uh, yeah, there's nothing unimportant um, and, and I'll have my email address. It's mgodike at cityofpella.com. I'll put that down at the bottom, about right here. And uh, yeah, send whatever you have in to us. Uh, Todd and I will be pouring over this information and uh, we'll look at everything. It might just be the missing puzzle. Even though it might not seem important right now, it might be the missing piece of the puzzle. And you're looking for, you know, not to purchase unless you want to purchase or sell, but you're looking for some of these gold coins that the mm -hmm. Dutch came over mm -hmm. here with that uh, helped them you know, make these purchases and, yep. and, and everything. Tell me a bit more about those. Well, they came over with a whole safe or trunk full of gold. They purchased everything with gold here. And um, that, that safe for a while sat in the Marion County Bank, and then now it sits in the Skolte House. And unfortunately, it's empty now, or so they say. <laughs> but that... Those coins had to have gone somewhere because they spent those coins with, with you know, the locals here. So it would be great to, um, to be able to see those, uh, scan them, take pictures, uh, even if it's just one, uh, just so uh, we can show people what they used to purchase the 18,000 acres of land. Uh, they purchased all of their farming equipment here. They purchased wagons, horses, oxen, pretty much everything they needed to thrive here in the city of Pella or around Pella with those gold coins. And it's interesting because we found out they actually had guards with that trunk or safe uh, at all times. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and 
in, when they were in St. Louis, it got out that there were a bunch of wealthy Dutch people that had purchased everything with gold. So security became a real issue then, and it kind of hurried their, um, their stay in, in St. Louis because they didn't want to stick around any longer than they had to because they were worried about being robbed. So that, that's a story in itself, really. Mm -hmm. That's why we want to have the, you know, see the gold coins and, and, uh, and take a look at those. Yeah, that would be a, a great segment for one of the early episodes. Yep, it would, absolutely. And you're not only doing all this research yourself, you know, you've had pet local historians like Ron Reedfeld and yep. Bruce Borchi, people like that that are really familiar with, with the past. How many hours have you spent with those guys? Oh, hours now. I, I, with Ron and Ruth Reedfeld, I've spent hours and hours with them. Um, Recently, they came over to my house, and we just sat at the kitchen table and talked about the about the history and and everything that Ron knows. And it's just overwhelming. It seems like every time I sit down with him, uh, I learn more things, and then that opens up new doors. And um, and and Bruce is amazing. I I use Bruce as a reference, you know, just to to uh, verify uh, facts because uh, he knows everything about pellet history. It seems. And, you know, my right-hand man, Todd Osterhout, uh, has really been a great help as mm -hmm. well. He's a pellet fiber technician here. He's an installer. Uh, but, yeah, he, he's really digging into things in his spare time. And we went down to St. Louis. Uh, we went to Keokuk. Uh, so, yeah, I couldn't do it without Todd either. And we were also discussing yesterday for a, an, an interview in the newspaper about why you think this is so important it's because you know you want to preserve that history and mm -hmm. you know you think you know i'm still a print guy and there's still a market for print but yeah. you're probably right that you know reaching more younger people you probably need something that goes on a screen yes everybody these days if you look at teenagers mm -hmm. if you look at people in their 20s mm -hmm. 30s 40s they're always like this they're always looking at screens and i, I thought you know, how better to reach the younger people and to get them excited about mm -hmm. history than to do a, a, a video, a, a film documentary where they can watch it on their screens. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's really my goal in all of this is to get younger people excited about our history and interested in, in that. Mm -hmm. So this, this product, this end product, this documentary, while it's educational, yes, but I really want to make it entertaining. Mm -hmm. I want to make people want to watch it because they're entertained by it as well as, as informed. Absolutely. What more would you like to know? I mean, we are talking about a pretty ambitious project, you know, with the time you've already put in. Mm -hmm. And you received a $3,000 grant from the Marion County Community Foundation. Yep but you're still accepting donations. How would one? We, we are, and, and mm -hmm. we're checking into that because of all the legalities and everything that, that in, is involved with the city. So I'm not yet sure how we can accept uh, donations, uh, but we're always looking for corporations to sponsor, uh, other, other foundations and things to sponsor this project. Uh, we don't, you know, this isn't a huge, huge uh, money-driven project. We're, we're doing this on, yeah. on, on a minimal amount, but there are certain things that go into the cost of a production like this, like uh, music. Music is very expensive to license. Mm -hmm. uh, there's everything from color correcting to editing to post-production credits, you know, uh, the whole shebang. And, um, you know, that all takes, takes a little bit of money to do that. So... The individual contributions, not quite sure how that's going to work yet, um, but you can always email me, mgodike at, at cityofpella.com, if you're interested in sponsoring or donating. I can find out those details and get that to you. And your history as well. If, if you have some knowledge, if you have facts, uh, pictures especially, video, probably not too much video because that didn't come along till later, but um, if you have uh, slides, negatives, Newspapers from those days, the 40s, you know, 1840s, 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and send that stuff to us because we're, we're willing to look through all of it and see if, that's, if it's relevant to the story. Absolutely. Is there anything more you want to make sure folks know about the documentary at this point? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, 
it's an exciting project, um, and I want to get everybody in Pella behind it um, mm -hmm. because I think our history is super important, and um, we need to conserve it now. You know, some of the people, you know, Ron is not going to be around forever. Bruce is not going to be around forever. I'm not going to be around forever. None of us are. So let's capture this, this story now mm -hmm. while we have these people available to us and get it on the film, get it in the can, so to speak, in the film business. And uh, yeah, then, then we'll, we'll have it forever. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Monty. Yep. Thank well, you very much for having me. Yep. Again, mgodike at cityofpella.com. Thank you again for tuning in, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Steve.